Good evening. I'm Kevin Walsh. Art Finnell is on assignment tonight. Back to school in New York City has never been quite like this. For about a million or so students, well, it's nothing more than a return to the neighborhood school. But in Brooklyn, it's something else entirely. Even Khalil Gibran, the great author of the literary masterpiece, The Prophet, couldn't see this one coming. The Khalil Gibran International Academy has enrolled about 66th graders. The school is public and the curriculum includes Arabic language and Arabic culture. Some feel it's an opportunity for students to improve their understanding of the Middle East. Others say it's more than that, a breeding ground no less for extremism. Correspondent Richard Roth has the story on this curriculum controversy. Come on, lady, help me out here. When New York City announced plans for a public school that would teach Arabic language and culture, Carmen Colon saw a great opportunity for her 11-year-old son. I know for a fact that any American who learns Arabic will make tons of money, whether it's translation, whether it's in the customer service area. I thought it was the best advantage I can give my son. But some are outraged over the school. We are paying with our public dollar for a religious school, a madrasa. Pamela Hall is with Stop the Madrasa. The group believes the Khalil Gibran International Academy will impose a radical Islamist agenda in its classrooms. The Arabic immigrant students will be isolated. Whether that materializes uh, instantly into terrorists, um, that's a huge um, statement to make. But are these students not assimilating and becoming part of the American fabric? And is that potentially a problem? We think so, yes. There's no basis in fact for what they're saying. Deborah Howard and Riyad Faraj, both parents of Brooklyn public school students, worked on the design team for the academy and say it is not a religious school. In terms of the curriculum, if it's a New York City public school, it has to go by New York City standards. I'm Jewish. I would never be a part of a school that would in any way, um, you know, be involved with Islamic fundamentalists. Much of the criticism was directed at the school's Arab-American founding principal, Debbie Almantasser. Two local papers reported claims she had ties to Islamic extremist organizations. The controversy reached a fever pitch when Almantasser was quoted defending the use of the word intifada on a t-shirt. She said in Arabic it simply means shaking off. Soon after, Almantasser resigned and the city replaced her with a Jewish principal who doesn't speak Arabic. To be attacked um, so viciously it, it, it is, has, has been unbelievably unfair and quite sad. The verbal attacks caused Cologne to pull her son out of the school. The people who are so against this school, who for me seem more like the terrorists, by, by terrorizing the community and making us feel that it's unsafe for our children to be there. They're the ones who are terrorizing us, not the school, not the principal, uh, and not the administration. School authorities here say parents and children voted with their feet, enrollment increasing despite the swirling controversy. Security will be increased here at the Khalil Gibran International Academy, a school named for a Lebanese poet who came to America and preached peace and tolerance. Richard Roth, New York. And that administration that Ms. Cologne speaks of is also speaking out. Garth Harries of the New York City Department of Education is fed up with all the negative press. He defended the school's mission. It's a core sixth grade curriculum that these kids are starting with, which is the basics, math, English, history, science. And the kids are also going to be learning Arabic, which is an incredibly exciting and unique opportunity for these kids. Religion plays absolutely no part in the school. It's, this is a public school. It wouldn't play a part in any of our schools. Um, as a theme school focused on a, on a language, um, it's like so many other. We have 70 dual language programs around the city, and those are programs that, frankly, give our kids a leg up. Mm -hmm. They give them a language. They're inclusive, um, and they let them learn about the world. All right, so as you just heard, he's touting the school as just a place to learn about the world. But as you also heard in the report, critics, including a group, group called Stop the Madrasa, say the trend is clear. These schools tend to promote radical Islam. Stuart Kaufman is a member of Stop the Madrasa, and he joins us from New York City. Stuart, what's your problem with the school? Uh, well, before, before I respond to that, I'd just like to, uh, to respond to one thing that Mrs. Cologne said, in which she said she was so concerned about and called us terrorists. We haven't threatened anybody. 
and we haven't done anything. We didn't even pick at the school. We've done nothing in the way of violence or threatening violence in any way, shape, or form. Now, this is the problem that we have with the school. Firstly, and I'll tell you in the negative, we do not object to learning Arabic in public schools. To the contrary, we're in favor of it. We do not object to learning Arab uh, culture in Arabic culture in, in public schools. To the contrary, we're, f uh, we're in favor of it. What we object to is the teaching of these courses in an insulated, hermetically sealed environment over which, let's face it, very few will have control. What now do you we mean, though? It's a public school. What do you mean it, it, it's so insulated? Well, it's very simple. It's a small school, and we have people who are with us and stop the madrasa who have been teachers for uh, many, many years in New York City public school system. And they will tell you that whenever the Department of Education would send somebody down to inspect, the principal would say to the teachers, they are coming to inspect us, uh, be careful, don't do anything wrong, we have to put our best foot forward. That's the first thing. You're kidding yourself if you think that there's going to be a continual monitoring of this school. Secondly, and this is even more important, I know that Mr. Harry's talked about the curriculum and what would be taught at this school. The fact is that we filed a Freedom of Inform Information Law request uh, with the Supreme Court in, uh, New York, in New York City. We have received no responses. We have received, in fact, no curriculum. We've received no list of whom the teachers are. Uh, we don't know what's going to be taught there. We have, filed, we have requested textbooks, a list of textbooks. We don't know what textbooks will use. All right. Is, is this really a madrasa, or is it a regular school with a little something that you just don't know about it, and, and it's the fear of the unknown which uh, makes you uncomfortable? Well, there are two things here. Sure, it's the fear of the unknown. But there are, there's a history here. Firstly, let's face it. The United States is at war. And th the blueprint, the strategy which is pursued by the Islamists, part of it is to take over our schools. This is not uh, some kind of a conspiracy theory. It's being done. And we just need to be concerned and guard against it. Okay, but in your in heart of hearts, environment. in your heart of hearts, sir, do you really think that this is a school that's going to be a breeding ground for a future extremist or terrorist? I certainly think it's possible. Really? Yes. You do. I think it's possible. Uh, the fact is that the curriculum for these Islamic, these Arabic studies programs, are put together in Maine by several universities under uh, Title VI or Title IV of the Higher Education Act, and part of that is, and and that money is going to these universities, but part of that is what's called community outreach. Mm -hmm. Now the fact is that these schools put together rather radical curricula. One example is, I, I don't remember who, which, which university, but I, I think it may have been Georgetown. Part of the curriculum was the teaching that, Ma, that the Arabs discovered America in the ninth century. Uh, well, one of the things about established universities, you have professors of tenure, and that affords them a certain level of protection. The, the, the parents of the students there can't get involved like they can at a public school. But let me ask you this. Would we be having this discussion if we weren't talking about New York and 9-11 never happened? I, I don't know. The fact is that we've become sensitized to this. And too many people just sit back and do nothing and allow events to, to, to roll over them. We finally decided that we've got to do something. Frankly, we're, we're substituting for the media. Why aren't the media asking these questions? The media should be asking for lists of textbooks. The media should be asking for lists of faculties. And the media should be examining curriculum. Why should it be left to citizens like us to do it? That's a good question. I don't know that I have an answer for you, but uh, I'm sure there are some people in the media that are doing that. One of the criticisms of America in general abroad is that we don't know enough about other religions. We don't know enough about other cultures. So if this is a place where students can learn more about that, don't you think it might buy us some goodwill around the world? Well, absolutely. I, I agree with you. There is, a, there is a, a fundamental ignorance of that here, and we've got to, it's got to be remedied. What we're saying is not, as I started by saying, we should be teaching these things in the public schools. We should not be teaching them within a hermet hermetically sealed environment mm -hmm. with a board of advisors that consists of completely, of, to of only religious figures, 
uh, in, in, a, in a sealed away place. All right. And Stuart, that's what we object to. Stuart, we're going to have to leave it at that, and we'll follow up with you at another time. Thanks for your time today, sir. You're very welcome. Thank All you. Right. What do you think about uh, this school? Legit education, or do you think it's a terrorist camp? What are your thoughts about that? We'd like to know. Send us an email to cn8.tv.